Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Brandon Kyle and I teach people how to make money online through affiliate marketing, side hustles, and other online income streams. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how you can fix your Amazon product listing that has variations, but for one reason or another, some of those variations are no longer contained underneath the parent and they're more like a standalone item. So we're gonna take a look at how we can fix that using the variation wizard, yes, and uploading a spreadsheet to fix these problems. So let me clarify a little further so we're on the same page and so that you know you're watching the right video. So you go into stupid Amazon and you're about to create a product that has some different variations. Let's say it has different sizes and colors. And we'll use this toy soldier as an example. So let's say it comes in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And we've got three colors, red, white, and blue. Three times three, that would be nine total variations because you have different sizes and colors. So you create the product, you put in the description, you put in the pricing, put in all the bullet points, and you hit submit, and you expect in the back end to have your one main product with all of the different variations underneath, but it doesn't work out like that. Yes, and you've got maybe one or two of the variations underneath the parent, which are the children, yes, your variations, and the other five or six or eight or however many are just standalone products. You waste your time like I did messaging support, which is crap, and they can never give you a straight answer. They copy and paste all these different articles, which really are outdated, or they don't tell you exactly what to do. Here's the hero who saves the day, okay? It's been a frustrating process, but I figured it out. There wasn't any YouTube videos out there and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's hop right into the computer. So let me show you one of my products so you have a general idea of what it should or could look like. Okay, I like to create funny, crazy, print on demand type of stuff. So I have some kinky BDSM gift wrapping paper that is a fan favorite. Okay, so on this page here, you can see we've got our description. I've got my size at the top, which are my different roll sizes here, and then my colors down below. So three sizes, four colors, that would be 12 variations right there. Now we can actually change uh, how that is displayed depending on your variations. Maybe you don't have size and color. Maybe you just have colors. Maybe you just have sizes. Maybe you want it to be color that shows up first and then the sizes. So we have some different variation options and the way that it displays and we'll show you that in the template. Now if we jump into the back end of my uh, inventory manager here, okay, you can see that we've got our different earmarks here and I got some of this blocked out. But if I have my variations for that exact product, you can see I have 12 variations and if I click the earmark, yes, all of those should be contained right underneath as you would expect it. So let me show you the issue and what really happens here. I'm not gonna teach you how to create a product. You should already know that. That you're here for the solution on how to fix it, but just for reference. So let's say you've gotten to this part right here. Okay, you've created your different sizes, small, medium, and large. We've got our different colors, red, white, and blue, and it could be totally different stuff. We've got all these different variations that are down here. It all looks perfect. And if you've never used this before, it's really easy. You could select all of these and enter all of the different stuff, which actually makes it really convenient, right? And the price is gonna be $9.99 and our quantity is $9.99, it's great. And then you apply all the changes to all of those and maybe even added all of the images and we've gone through all of this work and now we're going to hit submit and it should create it as expected but it doesn't and now we're going to go back and see what the aftermath looks like so now that we have the product submitted we jump back into our inventory manager and we're expecting all of our variations to be under the parent as expected but as you can see once again this is not the case, okay? So right here, we've got three variations. And if you press the little earmark right here, they will drop down and you'll be able to see one, two, and three. However, with this one, two, three, four, five, and six, right, these have not been added underneath. Why? I don't know. So we're gonna fix this. So now we're gonna use Variation Wizard to fix this. So I'm gonna jump over here in just a different tab. So we are gonna wanna work between multiple tabs. So you can come up here to the search bar. You can type in Variation Wizard very, I can't spell, V R R A <laughs> variation wizard. Okay, I'll try putting a link to it. I don't know if it'll pop up when you're logged into your seller account or not. Okay, uh, I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna click on this first result. It says the variation wizard is an interactive tool. You'll click on that and then it says up here, the variation wizard. Okay, great. Click on this, it's gonna pull you this page right here. Yeah, so what do we wanna do? We wanna add to or update an existing variation family and all you need to do is copy in one of the ASINs from either the parent or one of the contained children, which is right here, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna copy in the parent ASIN here, command C, or you could right click and do that. I suggest using shortcuts, it's a lot easier. Command V, I'm gonna copy that in there. I'm gonna hit search. 
and it's going to pull this up right here, okay? So this is, it's gonna create a spreadsheet for us. The size, remember we put sizes in, small, medium, and large, but it's for some reason it says this one count pack of one crap. So I'm gonna hit generate template. It only takes a minute. It'll come up down here below from our different ones. I'll come back to you in just a second. So now it's ready. It only takes a few minutes. We're gonna hit download. You can save it to wherever you want. I have a special folder. I'm gonna name it uh, test Amazon video and we'll save it here and i'm gonna upload this and open it in google drive or sheets uh works better in google sheets than it does on i'm on a mac so numbers or whatever doesn't work as good so i suggest using google sheets everybody has access to it so now we're going to jump over there all right so once you get the spreadsheet opened up whether that's in google drive or maybe microsoft excel you notice we've got a few different tabs down here on the very bottom um, you can read through the instructions or some information on images. Most of it's not really going to apply to what we're doing. Um, an example here of what it might look like. And this sheet's probably super old too because they never update their stuff. Uh, the data definitions, this is helpful here because if you happen to get any error messages, once you upload it, you'll be able to reference what the error code is based on this value here. But this is what it really looks like when you're on the spreadsheet. Um, then we come over here to the template. Yes, we're going to take a look at all these different values in just a second. And then in here are the valid values that you can use for those respective columns. Um, it can be a little overwhelming. We don't need to really use most of this stuff. So we're going to start on the template. We're going to stretch out some of these columns that are right here just so we can read them a little bit better. You notice that some of these have a little plus sign on top of it. Okay, and that has additional like... Uh, here it's other parts of the alphabet, but if you look over here where it says AD um, and AW, there's going to be like an AA and an AB and an AC. So we're going to expand some of these because we're going to need to use some of these for the size and the color theme. <clears throat> but so what we've got right here, this top one, yes, this is going to be your parent. And these are the three children that uh, were populated and now we need to get the rest of them in there. So if we look at this, these were the three, right? We can collapse it down and these one, two, three, four, five, and six are missing. So I'm gonna drag this tab over so it's a little bit closer. And if you're on a Mac and you hold command and option, you can press the arrows to the left and to the right. Um, and you can actually jump between the tabs without having to click it with your uh, mouse. So that'll save you some time. So what we need to do is we've got a few different things, right? We need to input here. Okay, we got to copy the SKU in. We got to copy in the product ID, which is going to be the ASIN and the product ID type, which we will uh, copy and paste in here shortly. Okay, so I'll do the first couple with you and then I'll just skip ahead when I get it all finished. So we're going to copy and paste the SKUs, the product name and the ASIN into uh, the spreadsheet here. So I'm going to just highlight this right here. I like to use shortcuts. Command C is going to be there, but you could right click it. Yes, and then you could do copy and then paste and all that stuff. Shortcuts are quicker, in my opinion. So I'm gonna go over here and come down here to the SKU. I'm gonna press paste, like so. And then we're gonna move over to product ID, which is going to be the ASIN number. And same thing, just double tap. Come back to the spreadsheet, Command V. And then last, we need to put in the product name which is just two cells over right here. Let me, just little, let me stretch this out so you can see a little bit better. Yes, and that's gonna have the name. So come back one more time just like this. Highlight that right there, Command C, go back to the right and Command V, or you could right click and paste, okay? So I'm gonna do that for all of these. One, two, three, four, five right here, and then we'll skip to the next step. Okay, so now we've got most of this copied in here. We've got a few other bits and pieces to do. Okay, we do still need to provide the product ID for the first three up here, these three children and the parent. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now so we can come back to the earmark. Yes, the parent ASIN is right here. We know this, that's nice and easy. That's gonna go at the top. Yes, the next one is gonna be LJ. If you look at, I just look at these last two letters because that's all that's really necessary. Or you could just work here and do 6X, so it's up to you. So I'm gonna actually just work my way down. Right, I'm gonna copy this one. <clears throat> just this part, I don't want any little extra bits and pieces, yes. And it's gonna be 6X, which would be this one right here, boom. Okay, child number two is going to be KZ, which would be this one right here. Yes, and then based on process of elimination, this last ASIN right here goes to LJ. 
put that up there, boom. Okay, so now we're in an okay shape right here. So now we need to still fill in some of this. So we can copy and paste this. Uh, sometimes it is a little bit quirky and you might need to manually come back and type some stuff. Um, it's trial and error and um, Amazon is stupid. So we are not doing a partial update. Okay, we're doing a full update. Partial update will not work. Okay, so we're gonna type in update. I'm gonna copy it and paste it, and I might have to come back at a later point and retype update per, uh, individually, depending on how it's working. Product type, ID type, this is an ASIN. Okay, so we're gonna copy and paste that here. Good, now coming through the cells, we do need to make a couple changes. The first things were fi right, we're fine, but if you notice this right here, it's a link, it's okay, but you notice that there's three little dots up here behind it. I don't know why that's there. So I'm just gonna backspace over that and take that out, or you could just hit enter and it'll open up and you can just go back over it. So I'm gonna go through and fix that right now. All right, we'll do this in real time. Boom, good. Now we're gonna update all of our quantities, put that value in here. Okay, the price, if you happen to have different prices between your small, medium, and large, you could input them here. So maybe small is $9.99, medium is 10, and maybe large is 11. Relationship type, these are all variations. So we're just gonna copy and paste that down there. Okay, things get a little bit crazy over here. Size and color. So we're gonna have size up top and then color, kind of like in my example. Sometimes, and there's, like I said, there's no rhythm or reason or rhyme as to why it does and doesn't work. You might have to come through and change the variation theme initially just to size and then come back to size and colors. It's stupid. Um, <clears throat> then we got our parent SKU right here. So we're just gonna copy and paste this once again, all the way down, boom. And then parent and child. So these are all children or children to be. And the last thing we gotta put in here are our colors and then our size. So this is one thing where we are gonna have to go back and forth and do some stuff manually. So it only did the first thing. It was red, blue, and white. But if I look over here, red, blue, white. So the next one's gonna be white, white, blue. So we can just type that in, white, white, blue. And then the next set is red, Come on, stupid. Red, blue, red. Red, blue, red. Okay, great. Now what is the size? Well, the size it says count one pack of one. If I open this up, why does it say that? I don't know, okay? So we're gonna remove this for now. And now we have, what did we have? We had small, medium, and large. So it is large, medium, large, right? I'm seeing over there, large, medium, large. Okay, and then we have medium, small, small. Great, and then the last three are uh, medium, large, small. Medium, and, and it starts to auto-complete after I start doing it, it's perfect, good, saving me time. Okay, I think we're in good shape right now, but I don't know because sometimes this system is stupid, but for right now, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna take this and we're gonna save it to your hard drive or your computer, your desktop, wherever you wanna save it, put it into a folder. By the way, if you're finding this information helpful or useful, if you could hit the like button or drop a comment below, that's always helpful to me. Also, if you're interested in learning how to make print on demand wrapping paper, like I showed at the very beginning, comment wrapping paper down below and I'll make a video for you all. And now we're gonna upload it into Amazon system. So if you search up here and you type in upload and give it a second, right? There should be a tool that says add products via upload and you can click on this. And it's gonna bring you to this page right here. You can put your email in right here and I always hit re remember my email address and it's gonna send me a notification when everything goes up. So you can drag and drop the file or you can browse it and find it. Okay, so I renamed it to one right here. We're gonna upload it. And this is gonna tell you if there are any errors. Ah, category item type. So we actually forgot that. Okay, that's a good one. Bad Brandon. So let's come back over here. Okay, and the category type is probably underneath here somewhere. Let's see what we got. Ah, perfect, right? I forgot to do this. Okay, but that's a good example. So same thing right here. You can see there's a value, copy and paste. And let's see here, is there something over here? Oh, product description, great. We can put that down here. The product description would have been like, this is amazing wrapping paper. It's got thick thick paper and it's perfect for all of your hot holidays. Okay, it's not like super important. But, so now we're gonna go back and resave this and re-upload it. Upload take two, 
Okay, and now everything looks good. Now, when I was doing this initially, the brand name didn't auto-populate as generic. Now that's something new, but I didn't have to add it. And if you already have a G10 exemption and it was flagging brand name, usually you're okay. Okay, so now I'm just gonna submit it and we wait. It takes maybe five minutes for it to update into the system. And then hopefully we're gonna go from our three variations to all nine and all of these will be contained within this parent category. All right, drum roll please. Let's see what happens here and if it actually worked. Uh, spoiler alert. Yes, I've already got this email saying that there are a couple of issues here uh, with one of the SKUs. I don't know why, right? It's th There's no rhyme or reason, which is exactly what I said. So I'm gonna refresh this. We're gonna see what happens here. Uh, we got, ooh, look, nine are in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, we got them all contained, not too shabby. Let's see what the product listing page looks like. I'm actually surprised it worked. The system is slow sometimes too, and I have expectations that when I upload it and it says it's finished, that it should just like instantly populate, but there is definitely some time delay uh, of up to 24 hours sometimes. Okay, look at that. Not too shabby, right? I didn't upload any pictures or any thumbnails yet, but those would actually pop up. So we've got a small, we've got our medium, we've got a large, which is great. And the fact that none of these are shaded out, so I don't know if you've ever been shopping on Amazon where it's like, I want the medium and then it shows you only the medium options that are available, but the ones that they don't have a medium are, are blocked out or blacked out or grayed out, right? So now this is all showing right here. So actually, <laughs> I guess it worked. Pat on my back right here, okay? Now at a later point in time, right, you can come back in and now you can add all of your bullet points. Let's go back over here, right? So now if you wanna go do your updates, this could probably take 24 hours. So now if you wanna make it easy, we've got them all contained. They are rehoused. Yay, I'm actually really excited about this that it worked because they're stupid. But you can come back into your variations. Yes, and this is the parent, right? And you can put all of your thumbnails here and it'll drip down to uh, all of your variations. And the same thing. So like for me, my product details are exactly the same regardless of the variation size or color. Color, right you can do that right here product description all your key product features like one roll of 30 inch wrapping paper uh, 90 GSM paperweight uh, made in America right that should be the same across every single variation so it's gonna be different depending on what your product and your product category is but at least you have that option all right so that's a wrap and hopefully that's helped you reorganize all of your scattered variations back underneath your parent product and hopefully helps you avoid days if not weeks of endless worthless customer service emails and support which isn't there so once again if you found this information beneficial and helpful if you could hit the like button drop a comment below or even subscribe to the channel that's always beneficial and i will see you in another video